Hello! In this video we will begin discussing rotations. An object can rotate around itself, in which case you get something that looks like this. An object can also rotate around some other point, in which case it looks like this. But before we can discuss how to deal with rotations, we need to define some quantities that are crucial for talking about rotation. The first quantity will seem pretty familiar, and it is called angular position. It is usually denoted by the Greek letter theta. Really, this quantity is just an angle. If we have an object rotating around this point here, we can measure its current angle. We measure angles from some line, which is usually the positive x direction, and we measure the angle in a counterclockwise direction. In this case, the angle is something like 30 degrees. If the object was here, then the angular position is measured as about 320 degrees, which is just 40 degrees short of coming back full circle. You could also call this position negative 40 degrees which means that it is 40 degrees from positive x, when measured clockwise, instead of the usual counterclockwise. The sign convention in general will be counterclockwise is positive and clockwise is negative. Now, we call this an angular position because it tells us where the object is on the circle of the rotation. This is similar to how a regular position tells us where in space the object is. But there is an important difference between the two. With regular position, each position value was unique. If I say something is at x equals 4 meters, there is no other x position that corresponds to the same location in space. With angular position, though, that is not true. 0 degrees corresponds to something over here. But what does 360 degrees correspond to? Well, it corresponds to having gone around the full circle, but ending up back at the same place. So both 0 degrees and 360 degrees correspond to the same angular position. The same was true for my example from before. I could refer to the same point as 320 degrees or as negative 40 degrees. In general, we can write this equation, which says that when you add 360 degrees to an angular position theta, you end up at the same angular position. More than that, if you add any multiple of 360 degrees, such as 720 degrees, in the case where n equals to 2, you will end up at the same theta. Next, we have the concept of angular velocity. It is usually denoted by this curly w thing, which is the Greek letter omega. You already know what velocity is. It is the change in position over time. Similarly, angular velocity is the change in angular position over time. So let's do a short example. If your object starts at an angular position of 0 degrees, and 3 seconds later it ends up at a position of 270 degrees, what is its angular velocity? Well, we first find the change in angular position, which is 270 degrees minus 0 degrees, which equals 270 degrees. We then take that change in angular position and divide that by 3 seconds, and we find that the angular velocity is 90 degrees per second. Now, if the angular velocity is constant, we can write this simple formula. The change in angular position is the angular velocity multiplied by the time passed. This is very similar to this equation where we say that the change in position equals the velocity multiplied by the time passed. As an object rotates with a certain angular velocity, it also has a tangential velocity. There is a simple formula that links the two quantities. The tangential velocity equals the angular velocity times the radius of the rotation, which is the distance between the object and the point around which it is rotating. Lastly, we will talk about the angular acceleration. It is usually denoted by the Greek letter alpha. An angular velocity does not need to be a constant. It can change, just like a linear velocity can change. The rate of change of the angular velocity is called the angular acceleration. This can be written like this, and is very similar to how we define linear acceleration, which is the change in velocity over time. The units of angular acceleration will be degrees per second squared. Just as we could connect the angular velocity to the tangential velocity, we can also connect an angular acceleration to a tangential acceleration. The connection is simply this. The tangential acceleration equals the angular acceleration times the radius. Now, let's just take a second and realize that each of these angular quantities have a corresponding linear quantity. Angular position matches up to position. Angular velocity matches up to linear velocity. And angular acceleration matches up to linear acceleration. Now, when we have a constant linear acceleration, we had some equations. The first says that the change in velocity will just equal the acceleration multiplied by the time passed. The second equation says that the change in position will equal 1 half times the acceleration multiplied by the time passed squared, 
plus the initial velocity times the time passed. Those two equations hold true by angular motion as well. We just need to replace each linear term with its corresponding angular term. As useful as these analogies are here, we'll find as we work more with rotations that analogies between angular quantities and linear quantities will be even more helpful in the future. In summary, the angular velocity is the change in angular position over the change in time. We can connect the angular velocity to the tangential velocity with this equation. The angular acceleration is the change in angular velocity per change in time. We can connect the angular acceleration to the tangential acceleration with this equation. Finally, just as we have these equations for the motion of an object when it has a constant linear acceleration, we can write equivalent equations when an object has a constant angular acceleration. And that's it for this video.